Hello, Year 11 students. As you know, your external exams begin next week, Monday, the 8th of May. Now, some of your exams will be done using the e-testing modality. The following video presentation will demonstrate how to use the e-testing software used by CXE. It is called Surpass. So this is the candidate screen. Once candidates have logged in and they select and they launch the application, which would be um, the secure client application, this is the screen that they will see when they log in. So here it asks for the candidate's key code. And you would input and you would give, well, the candidate should have their key codes once they come to the center. So you would ask them to log in using the key codes that they have been issued. So I will just log in as a candidate now so that you can see what I am speaking about. Now I am not typing in caps. The system is set to default um, with the caps lock option. And I say, okay. Now, if I come to, um, this is what candidates see. So they will see their first name and their last name, and they need to verify that this is who they say they are. Now, if a candidate logs in and they have been issued the wrong key code and they see a name that is not theirs, they can cancel and say, yes, my details are incorrect and alert you that they have the incorrect key code. Now, this should not happen because these key codes are specific to the candidate name and their record. So if I go ahead and sign in as that candidate again, I was just demonstrating the functionality there where they have to confirm their name. And I say, okay, now if, someone else was trying to log in with my key code, it would say invalid key code, this test is in use. So that is something that they would also need to alert you to because someone was trying to log in with their key code. Now, as I said, this should not happen because these key codes are unique to each candidate. So here, the candidate has to confirm their name. Now, please ensure that the candidates do confirm that this is who they are supposed to be before they go into the test. So give them the opportunity to take the time to read the screen and make sure that they're confirming correctly. So once they confirm that the details are correct, then they would see this box. And this box says, by ticking this box, you confirm that your details are correct, which means your name is correct and you're logging into the correct examination. And you accept the awarding organization's code of conduct. Now we know that the candidates' timetables have rules and regulations on the back of them. And we also post those red and white posters around the centers. This is what this is speaking to. So the candidates are confirming that they will adhere to any rules and regulations associated with the examinations. They will say, I accept these terms and continue. And here is where it will ask for the PIN. So this is where you would issue those candidates with the PIN codes so that they can then access the examination. and say enter and the screen will populate so that the candidates can see the instructions. Now in the system, there is a counter which gives the candidates the countdown of their time. Now you notice that once they're in the, on the introductory page, the counter has not yet started because it gives them time to read the instructions. They will see that it's the introductory page they will also see their name at the top of the screen. And on the bottom of the screen where they have this settings view, it gives them the functionality to change this, this display screen. So here, if they select preferences, you can select like 
blue. And if you say, okay, it can change the view of the screen for those candidates. We know that some candidates might have sensitivity to light or certain colors. So if they want to, they can change the background and um, have an easier time in the test or they can go back to default. I prefer the default. So I'll go back there and say, okay. So from here, I would select start the test. And now you can see that the countdown has started for the candidates. On your screen, you will see that this candidate is in progress. So this is what you will see once the candidates have started. So once you have all of your candidates with this green play button, you will know that all is well. So the candidate is in the test. As they are going through, they would read the respective question, select the respective response and go next. Now, if you notice, as I move from question to question, you will see a pointed arrow. This identifies the question that I am currently working on. Which other? and they select and they go next. Now, if the candidate reads a question and they are unsure of the response, they can flag that question and go next. And they can flag as many questions as they want. If I go down to question 20, you will see that the screen pushes up the questions. So if I flag that and I go next, it will continue to push the questions up and go from question to question. and go next. Now the candidates, as, you, as I indicated, the questions would have disappeared from here, but the candidate can either go back and those questions would scroll down and down, or if I select question four, it will go and go back. It will show me the question before, or the candidates have the option to use this section review where they can select this option and they can show any questions that they have flagged, they can filter, and then they can select that question and it will take them directly back there. Or if they can see the flag option, they will just select that question and respond to it before they finish the test. Now they can go back using the back button. If they're using a laptop, they can use the arrow keys or they can go back and next in here as much as they need to until they have responded to all of the questions that they can respond to. Before the candidate submits, they have the option to select finish test twice. Now, if they select finish test, it will say to them, you have not attempted all of the questions and some have been flagged. Are you sure you would like to finish? They can press cancel and go back and finish any of the questions that they have not responded to. So they can continue and in the exam as long as there is time still remaining on the clock. They go next and they continue. So once they're sure that they have finished, they select finish and they have to select finish again. So it then gives them notification that if they select finish, the answers will be submitted and you will not be able to return to the test.